Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So unfortunately it happened again, and I'm sure intuitive machines are like, what? Are you serious? Especially on the back of the successful blue ghost lander, but yeah. Intuitive Machines is officially 0 for 2 in the moon landing department. Which sucks, and I know it's a huge disappointment for them. I wanted to wait a little bit to make this video just to see if there was some more info that we could get on why this landing ended up the way that it did. And it does appear that we have some more information now. And some photos, some of which are kind of sad. So let's get into the story of Intuitive Machines' Athena Moonlander what went wrong, and why it didn't stick the landing. So as I said, the second moon landing attempt by Houston-based Intuitive Machines ended just like the first one did, with the lander dead after tipping over on its side. The lander officially touched down on the moon's near side at 12.30 p.m. on Thursday, March 6th, 2025. However, NASA noted that the spacecraft landed more than 1,300 feet away from its intended landing site near the moon's south pole. According to NASA, which hired intuitive machines to carry several scientific instruments as part of its CLIPS initiative, the lander prematurely suspended operations on Friday, March 7th, when its battery depleted just 12 hours after its rocky landing. Before shutting down, the lander's various instruments managed to transfer transmit about 250 megabytes of data to NASA, including a telltale photo showing two of the spacecraft's legs jutting upward. Now, it was not clear initially what went wrong with the IM-2 mission and the Athena lander. Joel Kearns, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration in the Science Mission Directorate at NASA, said, While we're disappointed in the outcome of the IM-2 mission, we remain committed to supporting our commercial vendors as they navigate the very difficult task of landing and operating on the moon. And again, this was their second lunar attempt. The first one I covered on this channel about a year ago when the Odysseus spacecraft touched down on February 22nd, 2024, becoming the first U.S. spacecraft to touch down on the lunar surface since Apollo 17 in 1972. However, during its descent, Odysseus's landing lasers malfunctioned, causing it to temporarily lose the guidance needed to estimate landing distances. As a result, one of Odysseus's legs snapped on the lunar surface, and the spacecraft fell on its side, limiting some of its functions. The spacecraft eventually fell silent one week after landing, shutting down power before the frigid lunar night set in. Now, of course, this might also slightly burn because this whole thing happened a few days after a successful touchdown by rival space company, Firefly Aerospace. The company's Blue Ghost spacecraft aced its landing on March 2nd, sending home an image of the lander's perfectly upright shadow cast onto the lunar surface. Blue Ghost is also part of NASA's CLIPS initiative and had about 10 NASA instruments on the lander and operated on the moon's surface for about 14 days. And not only did Athena snap a few pics of her surroundings before shutting off, but we now have other views of the lander. NASA's lunar Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter captured this image of Athena on March 7th, about 100 miles from the lunar south pole. Then, three days later, on March 10th, the probe snapped another pic, which provided a closer look at Athena on the shadowed floor of a 65-foot-wide crater. Now, this is disappointing not only for the lander, but for the experiments that were on board the lander. Athena was carrying a couple of ride-along robots, Lunar Outpost's MAP rover, and Intuitive Machines' own hopping spacecraft, Grace. Lunar Outpost said in a statement, Our Lunar Voyage 1 MAP rover successfully made it to the moon, collected data from the lunar surface and in transit, and proved MAP was ready to drive. And sadly, neither one of these robots are going to get their planned science time on the lunar surface. However, according to Intuitive Machines, the brief time that Athena did survive on the lunar surface before the batteries died can pave the way for future work in the area, which is thought to store a 
large quantities of water ice. The company wrote in a March 7th mission update, This Southern Pole region is lit by harsh sun angles and limited direct communication with the Earth. This area has been avoided due to its rugged terrain, and Intuitive Machines believes the insights and achievements from IM2 will open this region for further space exploration. So what happened here? Why did Athena's landing go the way that it did? Well, it's now been confirmed that the Athena Lunar Lander's altimeter failed right around the time the spacecraft reached the moon. In an interview on March 13th, 2025, Steve Altimus, CEO of Intuitive Machines, said the software on board did a credible job of recognizing nearby craters, even with elongated shadows. However, the lander's altimeter... Not so much. So while Athena knew where it was relative to the surface of the moon, it didn't know how far it was above the surface. And that's kind of the instrument's whole job. Determining the lander's distance from the surface, which it then uses for the final landing maneuver. As a result, the spacecraft struck the lunar surface on a plateau toppled over and then began to skid across the surface. As it did so, the lander rotated once, maybe twice, before stopping in a small shadowed crater. Steve said the landing was kind of like sliding into second base is not what you're looking for in a lunar landing. And it actually got a bit worse because when Athena skidded across the moon's surface, it kicked up a bunch of regolith, the fragmented rock debris on the moon's surface. So when it came to a stop, some of this material were blown up into the solar panels, which were already in a less than optimal location on its side. The spacecraft's power reserves, therefore, were very limited. So almost immediately, the team at Intuitive Machines knew that their spacecraft was dying. Steve said, we knew we had slid into a slightly shadowed crater and the temperature was very cold and Steve was not kidding. They estimate that the temperature in the crater where Athena ended up was approximately minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And with the solar arrays generating only about 100 watts of power, there was not enough energy to both power the spacecraft's heaters as well as communicate back to Earth using Athena's high gain antenna. So instead of limping along for 50 hours, mission operators decided to get as much as they could for 12 hours and try and get as much data as possible. And yet Steve was pretty positive about this flight and said that actually many things were better with Athena than they were with Odysseus. He said compared to the company's first spacecraft, Athena flew pretty smoothly. During the Odysseus flight in 2024, mission operators came into work each shift to put out the fire of the day. By contrast, Athena made it all the way to within miles of the moon without any significant problems. In doing so, the company validated the spacecraft's methane based propulsion system, which allows for a fast transit to the moon in less than a week. Additionally, the company proved out its communications technology that will be used as part of a lunar data relay network, which NASA had contracted with Intuitive Machines to develop. But it is indisputable that for the second mission in a row, the lander's altimetry data was not correct. Although it was a different problem with the altimeter this time, they're still not exactly sure on the cause. It could have been a thermal or a vibration event. It is still frustrating to fail for a samey reason. But Steve said that all the pieces are there and in the demanding environment of spaceflight, intuitive machines is close. Steve said, I would say it's more disappointing than really a material setback. The world was watching and we put our heart and soul into this company and this vehicle. And I look in the eyes of the team and they had such ambitions for this mission, Athena and Gracie the Hopper. I mean, it was a big Big leap. It might have been too big a leap on the second mission. NASA has committed to working with Intuitive Machines on two more lunar deliveries, with IM3 scheduled for 2026, or now possibly late 2025, and IM4 scheduled for 2027. Their third mission will carry yet another rover by Lunar Outpost, the Lunar Voyage 2 rover. So yeah, that's the story of Athena's... I don't want to say failed, but you know less than ideal landing. So let me know, were you guys surprised that Athena didn't make it? I kind of was, but maybe I was just high on the Blue Ghost landing, so I just kind of thought we'd have back-to-back -back moon landings, because that's how we roll now, but alas, no.
I mean, going to the moon is not exactly a cinch. I mean, not yet anyway. And it's a lot of new technology being tested by a lot of new space companies. So I suppose it's inevitable that there's gonna be maybe as many misses as there are hits. I think it's just the name of the game, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.